All right, prayer. All earthly things with earth will fade away, but prayer grasps eternity. But I'm convinced of this, God does not hear prayer. He hears desperate prayer. Prayer is not a position on your knees. Prayer is not a position, it's a disposition. You get to the place where you rather sweat, you rather weep in his presence than laugh in anybody else's presence. You rather God whisper a secret into your heart that breaks you than somebody give you the prizes that all the world covets. Prayer is almost the greatest human privilege that we have. First, we pray. You guys ready to pray this morning? Amen, amen. You guys ready to go in the Word of God this morning? Why don't you stand with me one more time right there as it is our custom to stand for the reading of the Word of God. Look, we're going to be reading out of the book of Ephesians this morning, chapter 6, and we're going to be looking at two verses, verses 12 and 13. Now, when you have it, I want you to say an amen. Now, look, look, look. If you don't have your physical Bible, you don't have a phone or anything, just look up at the screen and you can say amen, all right? Because our media team has got it there for you this morning, amen? You guys ready to read? I think we're waiting for a couple of people. I see some people scrolling. If you're in Genesis, you're, uh, you got to go a little further. If you're in Revelation, you got to turn back. You're way too far. Amen, amen. Book of Ephesians. Uh, those of you guys that have a smartphone, you know, we have it easier. We can just kind of type it in and it comes up. Back in the day when a pastor called out, you know, especially like a weird book. If he was like, uh, you know, go to the book of Job. You'd see everyone like, oh, oh, oh like trying, trying to scramble. Today we got it easier, amen? And then our media team has it on screen for you. So let's read it this morning. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12 to 13. It says this, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Verse 13 says this, therefore, I want you to read it all with me. Come on, ready? Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you, point to the person next to you, go, you, 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 you may stand your ground. Another version says, you may stand firm. It's a stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, amen, so you will be able to stand your ground. So right there where you are, I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes, and I want you to help me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you, Father. We thank you for you have been so good to us. Father, I thank you, God, that you are in this place. We were able to experience you and feel you even through the worship time, Father. Now, I pray that you speak to every person in this place. God, I pray that you speak to us and that you shake our souls, God, that we might be able to take this that we're about to learn, not just into Monday, not just for the rest of this week, but the rest of this year and the rest of our lives, Father, that we might be able to understand that prayer is a powerful thing. Open every mind that we might be able to understand your word. Open every ear so that we can listen to the audible version of your word and open every heart that we might be able to receive this seed that it fall in good soil and it produce much, much fruit. In the powerful name of Jesus, somebody say amen. You may be seated right there where you are. The title of my sermon this morning, I'm going to steal, borrow, because we're Christian, amen. I'm going to borrow a little phrase from this passage that we read, which is stand your ground. Say with me, stand your ground. Stand your ground. That's what we're speaking on this morning. Now, as many of you know from previous sermons and such, I love movies. I love watching movies, romantic movies especially. You know, uh, those are some of my favorite kind of movies, rom-coms. I love, I love me a good rom-com. But I love, I love, I love action movies. I love military movies. I have, I have a friend here who's visiting us from Sacramento, Brother Eli. And he lo- amen, amen, amen. And he loves you know, action movies too. He loves, uh, 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 you know, war movies and he's recommended some to me, amen. So if you think, you know, that, oh, pastor's watching war movies, you can blame Brother Eli, amen. Uh, But uh, I love those movies because in those movies, there are always moments at the very end, the final battle where you would call that the last stand. See, the enemy that is fighting, you know, the, 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 the main army is, is, is about to defeat them. It looks like they're about to lose and they might be smaller. They might not be as armed as everybody else, but the main army, they decide to take a stand. They decide that they will not let the other army bully them. They will take a stand and they will fight until the end. And this morning I have titled my sermon, Stand Your Ground. Stand Your Ground because we, whether you know this or not, are in a battle every single 
day. Around us, there is battles going around us that we have no idea. Some of us are walking through life. We have no idea that there are battles going around. Now, these battles aren't with your coworker. These battles aren't with your spouse. These battles aren't, you know, with your significant other or your friends or your parents. These battles are spiritual battles. Somebody say spiritual. They're spiritual battles. Now, normally when I preach, okay, and, and you guys have heard me preach now for around a year and a half since we opened, n normally when I preach, I, I don't like to put too much emphasis on the enemy and demons and the devil. Why? Because he has been defeated. I'd rather tell you about Jesus Christ, the one who defeated him. I I'd rather preach to you about the one that has all the power that can change your life. But that is not to say that the enemy is not real that is not to say that there isn't a battle going around us that isn't to say that there aren't attacks that people face every single day and when i look around and and i see the things that are going on in our generation especially i know that we are being attacked i know that there are battles that are happening that we cannot see and there are things that for some, you know, for some years, I, you know, I, I grew up in church my whole life, and some years I, I would hear people say, you know, for example, I would hear young Christian kids tell their parents, oh, you know what, uh, um, I got a D on my test because because the enemy, you know, it was the it was the devil, you know, or 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 I haven't been able to get a job because. Uh, because it's the devil. No, you haven't submitted a job application or you didn't study for your test. So I think for too many years, we've demonized everything. You know, I come again from a very old school, traditional, you know, a style of background where, you know, jeans, and the diablo, right? They're, they're from the, you know, from the devil. You wore a V-neck, that was from the devil, you know? And if you had earrings, you know, as a girl, like, oh my God, like that was, you were possessed, you know? Like, so, so I, I come from, you know, I, I grew up in that, that kind of, kind of background, right? And, and I think for too long, we have demonized so, so many things. And that's one extreme. But the other extreme is to walk through life thinking that nothing's going on. Walking through life thinking that there is no attack. Walking through life, you know, just like, like I don't know who walks like that, but right? Just like walking around thinking that nothing is wrong, that, that you know, that, that there's nothing going on around us. That's another extreme. And today, I, I want to let you know that there are battles going around. There are battles that we cannot see. As I mentioned, today when I see our generation, I think back to 1 Peter 5, 8, which says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, it says your, not the enemy, it says your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Say devour. And so when I see this next generation, I see some devouring going on. I see anxiety is through the roof. Depression is through the roof. Suicide numbers are through the roof. Sexual immorality is through the roof. Perversion is through the roof. We are being attacked and we don't even know it. But I want to speak to those this morning that want to take a stand against the enemy and say, I will no longer let you bully me. I will not let you bully my church. I will not let you bully my family. I will take a stand because I know what is right and I do not any longer want to be under this attack. I no longer want to feel this oppression. I no longer want to be dealing with these situations. And so I will take a stand, if not for me, then for my next generations to come. So the first thing that I want you to know is this, and if you're one of those holy Christians taking notes this morning, this is my first point this morning. Put on the armor of God. All right, here's the first thing you need to know in order to win the battle. You need to put on the armor of God. Now, Ephesians 12, 13, which is what we read this morning, tells us that we must, we must put on the armor of God in order to be able to win this fight. Now, armor, okay, protects you against attacks. Now, we see armor, you know, when I think of armor, I think back to, like, medieval times, right? Like, I think back to, like, a knight in shining armor and, and this whole, like, metal outfit. That's kind of what comes to my mind when I think of the word armor. But the reality is that we use armor in our everyday lives and in, in, in society all the time. For example, let me give you some examples. In sports, football players wear helmets on their head and padding under the uniform to be able to withstand the collisions from the opposing team. Soccer players, you know, we're a lot tougher, right? So we, we don't need that much armor. But, but we do use some shin guards, amen? We do use some shin guards because if, a, if you were to collide with somebody else's shin at the right place, at the right strength, in the right speed, you might be able to snap 
Your sin. You can, I've seen it happen, and, and it's gross. I've seen feet go backwards, and, and it, it, it's bad. It's bad. So we wear shin guards. Right? I say we like I'm a soccer player. I, I'm retired. There, there's some real soccer players right, right here. Right? I, I'm, I'm retired, but, 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 but they're, they're, those are arm, that's an armor that we use. In work environment, like in construction, workers wear hard hats to protect themselves from objects and debris falling while they're on the job site. While uh, other, other workers, uh, you know, have a, a, a friend here who uses protective uh, eyeglass wear or goggles to protect their eyes from paint or particles, you know, flying into, into their eyes. We, we wear masks so that when you're on, on a job so that things don't go, you know, into, into your mouth. While driving, you wear a seatbelt. And you're in a car and, you know, you're in this car that's full of airbags. So that if you were to collide with another car, if you were to go into a collision or something were to happen, you don't fly out, as Brother Ivan was telling me yesterday, you know, you don't fly out of the window, right? Or, or you don't bang your head on, on, on something in your car. We, every day, go through life surrounded with armor. So I have a question for you this morning. If we live our lives every day with armor around us, why do we think that we can walk around without anything to protect us spiritually. If we get in our car and, you know, you, if, if you're, you know, a good person, right, a good driver, you buckle your seatbelt, Brother Andrew, right, you, you buckle your seatbelt. I'm, I'm just saying because yesterday he gave me a ride. And so, you know, if you buckle your seatbelt, you know, you, you're, 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 you're doing it because you want to make sure that if something were to happen, you're protected. If you go play a sport and you're smart, you put a helmet on, you put some shin guards on something to protect yourself. So why is it that we walk around life thinking that we, know, we don't need any spiritual protection, that we don't need anything to protect us against attacks that are going around every single day. Now, the only thing that will protect you against spiritual attacks is the spiritual armor of God. It's not an amulet. It's not a card. It's not even a cross. It's not even this Bible. If the enemy were to come and I, I just show him this Bible, it's not going to do anything. But when this Bible lives inside of me, it comes alive and I'm able to use it to attack the enemy, to defend myself. Uh, if, if you were a cross, you know, I, I, I sometimes I have a, 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 I'm not wearing it right now. This is a different one. But sometimes I, I have a, a chain that, you know, that has a cross on it. I don't do it for anything religious. I, I, I don't do it because I think that, you know, it's going to protect me. No, it just, it looks cool. That, that's it. But, but the, the enemy, when, when he comes to you, right, if, if you were to have an attack with the enemy and you just show him your, your cross, I mean, he, he's probably just going to laugh at you because, you know, it's not even real gold, right? And so it's like you're getting like a rash on your chest, right? I'm speaking about mine, right? Mine's not real gold, right? But, but, but you know, the, the enemy, you know, it, that's not something that will scare him because the cross itself is just a symbol. What gave it power is Jesus Christ on the cross. He is the one that has power. He is the one that rose from the dead. And so the only thing that will protect you against spiritual attacks is the armor of God. Now, what is the armor of God? Ask me. What is the armor of God? Thank you. I'm, I'm glad. That, again, I'm, I'm stealing that from my father. But uh, I, I'm glad that you're asking me this morning. Well, if you've been in Sunday school as a kid, let me see. Any of you like old school Christians? Y'all went to Sunday school? Raise your hand. Let me see. How many Sunday school people? Are, okay, okay. Hey, pretty much everybody. Glory to God. And if, uh, if, you, if you didn't get to go, we do have Vine kids. So, you know, no matter your age, you, you, can, you can go in there and, and, and learn with them along with the grape. Amen. But anyways, if you were in Sunday school growing up and for any period of time, you have heard of the armor of God, okay? There was a series called Bible Man. And I, I remember, you know, when I was a kid, my parents didn't let me watch, you know, uh, other kind of cartoons. Again, I come from a very traditional background. So everything else was, was the enemy, right? So I could only watch Bible Man. But I remember growing up watching Bible Man, he would have this scene whenever he would get ready for battle, he'd put on the armor of God. And it was so cool to me as a kid. And in case you've never heard of the armor of God, let me share it with you. We're talking about the belt of truth the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. But if you're under attack and, and you don't have time to remember all of those parts, then I want to share something with you this morning. What you need to remember is to put on Jesus. To put on, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Yes, amen. Let me tell you why. Because Jesus said, okay, that, so first of all, we need to put on right truth okay so jesus said i am the way the 
truth and the life nobody comes to the father except through me so when you need truth put on jesus now it also tells us to put on righteousness well the apostle paul tells us in first corinthians that jesus is our righteousness so we can put on jesus we are supposed to put on peace well jesus said that in this world you will have trials and tribulations but i give you peace so we can put on jesus we need salvation and we know through scripture that jesus is our salvation now we need to use the sword the word of god well the bible tells us in john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and then verse 14 says and the word became flesh and dwelt among us so jesus is the word so if you remember nothing else today put on jesus whenever you're under attack put on jesus so how do we put on the armor of god because that sounds nice that sounds cool right but but how do we do that how, how do you actually do that what store can you go to buy you know a helmet and, and, and a spiritual sword what does that look like what does that mean to put on the armor of god it the only way that you can do that to prepare for battle is through prayer when you pray you are literally arming yourself for battle now, we should pray all the time, as we discussed a couple sermons ago. You should pray all the time, right? But when the evil day comes, which is what we read this morning, to put on the form of God so when the evil day comes, we're prepared. When that evil day comes, we must pray. Now, many of us only pray when the evil day comes. So we should pray all the time. We should pray all the time because all the time when we're walking around, we should be armed, ready to go. Ready to go at any time so if the enemy tries to attack, if anything comes our way, we are ready to go. We are ready to fight back. Now, I want to tell you something else today. This is my second point this morning in terms of the armor and in terms of prayer. Because when you pray, you put on the armor of God, right? So my second point is this. God hears your prayers instantly. Say instantly. Instantly. He hears them instantly i know the response isn't always instant but i want you to know that he hears them instantly whatever you've been praying to god for whatever you've been asking god for whatever is in your heart that you've been crying out to god for i want you to know that he heard it the moment that you open your mouth and you talk to him he hears your prayers instantly the bible shares an account in, in daniel chapter 10 where daniel has a vision from god that there is a battle coming, there is great attack coming on his nation. And so he is so worried and he does the only thing that he knows how to do. He gets on his knees and he begins to pray. Daniel was a man of prayer. And so he begins to pray, but this isn't any kind of prayer. This isn't, you know, the kind of prayer that's like, God bless this food in your name, amen. Right? This isn't like, okay, God, I'm going to sleep, thank you, amen. No, no. He gets on his knees and he begins to fast. He eats, the Bible says, no good tasting food. Uh, that's, that's crazy to me, number one. Then it says, he eats no meat. I'm, I'm a big carnivore, so to eat no meat, that, that's hard. That, that one's hard. Then he says, to drink no wine. I don't drink wine, so that one's easy for me. Then he says, no lotion. When I, was, when I read that, I was like, lotion? I was like, that's so, so random. Like, what? like, everything made sense. But you got to understand that back then, the climate that they were in and the region that they were in was so dry and the heat was so intense that their skin would begin to crack and they would have uh, uh, issues on their skin. And so they constantly used lotions. They constantly used anointments to be, or ointments to be able to to anoint themselves physically so that they would be able to withstand the conditions of the time they found themselves in. And so Daniel is saying to God, I am willing to give up food. I am willing to give up pleasure and comfort for almost a month, because it says he did this for three weeks, for almost a month to show you how badly I need to hear from you. I want to ask you this morning, how badly do you want to hear from God? How badly do you want a response from God? How badly do you want God to operate in your situation, in your circumstance? I think too many times we want all the blessings of God, but we don't want to sacrifice anything. We want every promise. We want every blessing. We want multiplication. We want all healing, all this stuff. But what are we willing to give up? What are we willing to offer? What are we willing to sacrifice, to let go of, so that God can move in our way, in, in our life in a powerful way? My third point for you this morning is this. Prayer mixed with fasting releases God's favor. Now, I want to spend a little bit of time here because this is very important. I've told you about prayer. We've talked about prayer for the last couple of weeks. But fasting mixed with prayer 
is a powerful combination. Now, I know that as Christians, we pray, right? You guys pray today? Raise your hands. Let me see. Y'all pray today. Y'all pray this week. Glory to God. Amen. We, we pray. As Christians, we pray. But how many of you guys fasted this week? Okay, one person. But I know that one's because di- that's a dietary thing. So let me see. <laughs> Somebody else. Anybody else? No? So why then, as Christians, do we pray? We come to church. We play on a worship team. You know, we, we, we sing songs, we, we're on a media team, we're, we're doing all this stuff, but we don't fast. I feel like that's something that we're kind of like, ah, that, that one's good, but that, that was Old Testament. Nah, that, that one's, nah, I'm on the New Testament, baby. I'm on this part of the Bible over here. Fasting's in the New Testament as well. And, and I, I, I feel like sometimes we're like, well, no, that's a generational thing, right? Like, like my dad, my grandpa, like, but me, I don't, I don't need that. And then I look at the statistics and I'm like, yeah, I, I see the reflection of no fasting and, and lack of prayer. Suicide up, anxiety up, depression up, all this stuff. Because we're a generation that isn't used to praying and fasting. But, but I want to encourage you this morning, okay? I, I'm not here to, to condemn you. I'm not here to tell you that, that you're a bad person. No, no, no. I want to encourage you and give you, empower you, give you this tool. Because it will change your life. I'll share with you personally. Every single Sunday, every single Sunday, when I come here before you, I fast. I haven't eaten anything. I, you know, I put on some lotion. All right, I cheat a little bit. I put on some lotion, amen. But, but I fast, all right? I don't, I don't need it. I don't eat anything. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why I do this. You don't think that I'd love to have a bowl of Lucky Charms right before I, I come to church? You don't think I'd love to have some, some you know, pozole because I'm Mexican, right? Like right before, you know, uh, I come to church or, or that I'd, you know, love to tell our, our, you know, someone from our hospitality team, hey, can you, can you give me a plate of, of pancakes or I don't know, something, right? That would be awesome. But the reason I don't do it, the reason that I don't eat, the reason I decide to fast is because I know that when I'm up here, When I'm up here, I'm speaking the word of God. I know that I am unqualified. I know that I am not enough. I know that I don't have power to do anything. But I know that if I were to sacrifice something, I know that if I offer my life and give my life to God, he can use me to speak his word. I am not enough. I am not, I am not qualified to be here. But I want to tell you this morning that it doesn't matter how qualified you are. It doesn't matter how, what you look like. It doesn't matter how long you've been in church. If you offer your body to God, if you offer yourself, every part of you to God, He will use you. And so the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 10 that He decides to fast and pray. Now when you fast and pray, you release the favor of God on your life. I want to make a point clear here, okay? There is a difference between God's love and God's favor. Say love. love. Now say favor. favor. Now say love again. Love. But say it with love. Come on, guys. Say love. love. If your significant other is here, I'm going to give you a chance to earn some brownie points. Look at them and go, love. Yeah, love. Love. I love you, baby. You know, love, right? Okay, so we got love and we got favor. Two, two very, very different things. There is a difference. I do want to make an emphasis on this. Love and favor. Favor and love. Now, God's love, okay, God's love is full seven days a week, 365, 24-7. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it. It's unconditional. It's everlasting. There is nothing that you can do for God to love you less. God's love is always there. It's always great. It's free. God's, that's God's love. Favor is different. There's a difference between favor and love. Now, favor is different because initially it's given to you as a gift. It is free to you. But its increase on your life is dependent on the stewardship of what you do to gain God's favor. God's love is full and free, but favor of God doesn't come in its fullness on your life until you do certain things that get God's attention. We see this throughout the scripture we see this throughout the bible you can't buy god's favor it's not like you got to buy it it's 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 not like that but the increase of favor comes from obedience and sacrifice say obedience yeah and say sacrifice the favor of god comes from obedience and sacrifice that is why fasting is so 
powerful because when you mix prayer, which is God hearing you instantly with fasting, with, which moves the heart of God, it opens the doors of his favor on your life. And Daniel chapter 10 shows us that when God's favor is open, he will send angels to fight in your favor. You don't even need a fight, but if you're obedient to God, if you are willing to live a life of sacrifice, to give up certain things in your life, he will open the doors of favor and send angels to fight on your side so if you're facing something that's impossible a situation or a battle that you're dealing with anxiety depression lust addiction or, or something that just seems too big for you to handle the answer is found in prayer and fasting now sometimes it happens right away I've seen it happen I, I was at a, at a service not that long ago where I was invited to translate for him. And the preacher, he was preaching, right? And it was, it was a great sermon. And then he did the altar call and, and people were being healed at the altar call. But then I saw something that was crazy. I'd never seen this happen before. I've preached my whole life. I've been in services my whole life. But this, was, this one was new for me. They bring him a phone. The pastor brings him a phone. <laughs> and on the phone, right? So uh, my phone's right here. On the phone, someone's on FaceTime. And it's a baby. And, 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 and the, mom, the mom's carrying, you know, the baby, and, 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 and he shows the phone to the preacher. And so the preacher grabs it, and he's like, what, you know, what's, what's going on, right? And, she, and the pastor tells him, hey, you know what, um, the, the, that baby that's on screen right there, they've diagnosed him. They've told him that he can't hear. It's a condition that he was born with, and, and he, he just can't hear. And so the preacher prays for this child. And the next day, we hear the testimony that they, because they had, a, they had a, a scheduled appointment at the hospital the next day. That's why they were asking for the prayer. And they go to the hospital, and the baby is able to hear. It was instant, and it was amazing. Amen. Glory to God. It was, I, I saw it with my own eyes. I, I know the people. I, I know this is real. So sometimes it's instant, but sometimes it can take some time. With Daniel specifically, the Bible says that when he began to pray, from the moment he began to pray to the moment that his prayer was answered, it took three weeks. So almost a month for pray, his prayer to be answered. Sometimes it's instant. Sometimes it takes a month. But I want to encourage you this morning, Vine Church, keep on praying. Even when others laugh at you, keep on praying. Even when others assume that it's impossible, keep on praying. Even when you feel like calling it quits and giving up, keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. I'm going to ask Sister Jenny if you could uh, unmute this piano for me, please, because Brother Ivan's trying to minister to us this morning. Amen. But I want to encourage you this morning. Keep on praying. No matter what you're facing, no matter what's going on, no matter how hard the situation looks, it might take a day, it might take a month, it might take a year, it might take a decade, but keep on praying. I want to share that when we... We were this weekend, we were sharing with the preacher that was here all three days <clears throat> in this event, and we were telling him the story of this church and how this church came to be, the, the, this building, this facility. And, and we were telling him, and he said, when, when did you guys start in the ministry? And, and we remember that it was about 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, God said, be faithful with this. And we were faithful in the place that he put us, a small little church downtown San Jose, 56 South Montgomery Street. He said, be faithful with this. They were about to shut down that church. There was no, it was in terrible condition. It was leaking. There was rats everywhere. Sound system was terrible. It was just the worst of the worst of the worst. And God said, be faithful. And we served for 10 years. And there are people in this building that were there during those 10 years. And they were faithful to God. Jocelyn, you remember being faithful to God and ministering every single week nonstop, praying to God, believing to God. And 10 years later, we were able to step into this place. It took 10 years, but we kept on praying. It might take 10 years, but I want to encourage you this morning. Keep on praying because he hears your prayers. He hears your cries. Why don't you stand with me this morning? Brother Andrew, if you could come as well this morning up, uh, up here and, and lead us in that last song. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. I don't know what you're facing this morning. I don't know what, <laughs> what issues you got going on. I don't know what situation is existing outside of church, but I want to encourage you to keep on praying. And when it becomes impossible, when it seems like nothing's going to happen, when you've prayed all you can pray and, and, and you have no more words, remember that prayer and fasting opens the doors of favor of God on your life. And when you pray and you fast, what you're telling God is, God, I am willing to give up pleasure. I'm willing to give up food. I'm willing to give up time. Whatever you're fasting, I'm willing to give it up 
because I need you to respond to me. I need you to operate in my life. I need you to speak to me. I need you to make a way because I can't do it on my own. And when that's our position, when that's our disposition, the doors of favor open on your life. And I know that there are people in this place that are asking God for something, whether it's for you, whether it's for your family. Maybe somebody needs healing in your family, someone in your friends, somebody that's sitting next to you maybe this morning or standing next to you. Well, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, to close your eyes right there where you are, and I'm going to ask you to pray with me. And I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray that the doors of favor open on your life, that God's favor is just poured out on your life, and that you have favor with God, but as the scripture says, also with men. That wherever you go, that whatever you step into, that his favor just follows you. That his favor goes before you, it goes behind you. But you got to keep on praying. <clears throat> you got to keep on praying. I know it might seem hard. I know it might seem even sometimes ridiculous. But you got to keep on praying. You got to keep being obedient to God's word. I want to tell you this morning that, that there are attacks that are going on in your life. There are certain things that have been passed down from families, generational things, generational curses, generational sicknesses. There are things that are passed down. We know this, but we also know that prayer, putting on the armor of God, using the sword of God, which is the word of God, the sword of the spirit, is capable to break every chain, to break every oppression, to break every addiction, to break every sickness. And so this morning, God, we come before you. This morning, God, we come before you and we praise you even through the hurt. We praise you even through the battle because we know that the battle belongs to you. We know that every situation, we release it from our hands and we put it into your hands. Father, I pray this morning, God, that this generation, that this church be the church, God, that takes a stand. Even when it's hard, even when it looks impossible, even when it's been years, that we can take a stand against the attacks of the enemy, against the attacks that come on our lives, that come against our families, God. That when discouragement, that when anger, Father, that when depression, anxiety, suicide thoughts, God, or, uh, Father, lust, that when all these things come to us, Father, that we can put on Jesus that is our salvation, that we can put on Jesus that is our truth, that we can put on Jesus who is our righteousness, that we can put on Jesus who is our peace, that we can put on Jesus who is the living word of God. Father, help us put on Jesus this morning. And I want you to know, church, this morning that God <laughs> hears your prayers. I want you to know that your prayers are not in vain. That when you pray, that when you cry out to God, you are speaking to a God that is real. You are speaking to a God that hears you. You are speaking to a God that has the power to operate in your life and change your situation, change your circumstance. So keep on praying whatever you're facing keep on praying I'm gonna ask you to lift your hands with me right there where you are <laughs> begin to pray to him thank you father because you, you are our hope you you're our salvation Declare with me, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. <laughs> it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out we our praise. praise. We praise you even through the battle. We praise you even through our sickness. You put that breath in us in the beginning. And so we use it to praise you, to exalt you. Say it's your It's your breath. 
I want you to know that God listens to you. I want you to know that he is a powerful God, that he hears you and he works in your favor, that when you fast and you pray, he sends angels on your behalf. I see that this morning in the spiritual, that he is sending on your behalf angels to fight for you, to intercede for you. The word of God says that the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us to the Father. And so this morning, I need you to know, Vine Church, that your prayers are heard, that your help is on the way. Psalm 121, I raise my eyes up to the heavens. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord that created heaven and earth. The help is on the way. And if you believe it, I need you to give him praise this morning. If you believe that his help is on the way. Hallelujah. Say, it's your Let's finish this moment together. Say, so we pour out our praise. Pour out. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you. Give him praise this morning. Give him praise this morning. He's good. He's good. He's good. He is so good. Amen. He is so, so good. You may be seated right there where you are. Let's see what we got going on this week here at Vine Church. Here at Vine, we're a church made out of small groups. This means that throughout the week, we meet at someone's home, talk about the Word of God, and do life together. If you aren't part of a small group, talk to me or anyone from our Connect team members after service and join today. So, what are you waiting for? Don't do life alone. Join a small group today. Hey Vine, hope you're having a great Sunday so far. We would love to see our Sunday experience through your point of view. So, take a pic on Instagram or Facebook, use the hashtag VineChurchSJ, post it on your story or feed, and we will repost and share with our online community. Through something as simple as a post, we can help spread the word about our church and Jesus Christ. Hey Vine Church, we want to invite you to our 9.30 a.m. coffee hour. This happens every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. in our lobby. It's a great time for fellowship and you can enjoy some coffee before service. So invite a friend and we'll see you next week. On behalf of everybody here at Vine Church, we hope you have a wonderful week. God bless you. Hey, Pastor Abe here. I want to thank you for checking out our channel today. I hope it was a blessing and encouragement for your life. While you're here, consider subscribing to our channel for future videos and check out the rest of our channel for content just like this. I pray that God go before you and bless you in this season of your life. God bless you.